Hey guys! Okay, so we're back. We're reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling, the Scholastic Press edition. We are on the end of page 52, where uh, we find out very precipitously that Harry is a wizard. Thank you, Hagrid, for telling us. And he has accused Uncle Vernon of being a muggle. And we're about to find out what in heaven's name that is. So, um, we are on chapter 4, top of page 53, and we are going to read to the end of the chapter. And then we will wait, and I think next time we will move on to chapter 5. So here we go! You ready? All right. A muggle, said Hagrid. It's what we call non-magic folk like them. And it's your bad luck that you grew up in a family of the biggest muggles I ever laid eyes on. We swore when we took him in we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. We swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You knew I'm a, a wizard? No, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. No, of course we knew. How could you not be my dreaded sister being what she was? Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that, that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for what she was, a freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that, and they were proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It seemed she had been wanting to say all this for years. Awfully jealous, isn't she? Then she met that Potter at school, and they left and got married and had you, and of course I knew you'd be just the same, just as strange, just as, as abnormal. And then, if you please, she went and got herself blown up, and we got landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, Blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash, roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Dursleys scuttled back to their corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? It's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in our world knows his name. But why? What happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you, how much you didn't know. Oh, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's got to. You can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. Mind, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery, parts of it. He sat down, stared into the fire for a few seconds, and then said, It begins, I suppose, with with a person called... But it's incredible you don't know his name. Everybody in our world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Gulp and gargoyles, Harry. People are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went bad. As bad as you could go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name was... Hagrid gulped, but no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. No, nah, I can't spell it. All right, Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyway, this... This wizard, about 20 years ago now, started looking for followers. Got him, too. Some were afraid. Some wanted just a bit of his power, because he was getting himself power, all right. Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust. Didn't dare get friendly with strange wizard or witches. Terrible things happened. He was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him and he killed him. Horribly. One of the only safe places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore's the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't try taking the school, not just then, anyway. Now your mum and dad were as good a witch and wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their day. Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get him on his side before. Probably they knew that they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted him out of the way. All anyone knows is he turned up in the village where you was all living on Halloween ten years ago. You was just a year old. He came to your house and... and... Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty, spotted handkerchief... <sighs> and blew his nose with a sound like a foghorn.
Sorry, he said. It's just that it's... But it's that sad. New Year Mom and Dad and nicer people you couldn't find. Anyway, you know who killed him. And then, and this is the real mystery of the thing, he tried to kill you too. Wanted to make a clean job of it, I suppose, or maybe he just liked killing by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead? That was no ordinary cut. That's what you get when a powerful, evil curse touches you. Took care of your mom and dad in your house, even. But it didn't work on you, and that's why you're famous, Harry. No one ever lived after he decided to kill him. No one except you, and he killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. The McKinnons, the Bones, the Prewets. And you was only a baby, and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Hagrid's story came to a close, he saw again the blinding flash of green light more clearly than he had ever remembered it before. And he remembered something else for the first time in his life. A high, cold, cruel laugh. Hagrid was watching him sadly. Took you from the ruined house myself, on Dumbledore's orders. Brought you to this, this lot. Load of old tosh, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He had almost forgotten that the Dursleys were there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have got back his courage. He was glaring at Harry, and his fists were clenched. Now you listen here, boy, he snarled. I accept there's something strange about you. Probably nothing a good beating wouldn't have cured. And as for all this about your parents, well, they were weirdos, no denying it. And the world's better off without them, in my opinion. As for all they got, getting mixed up with these wizarding types, just what I expected, always knew they'd come to a sticky end. But at that moment, Hagrid leapt from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat. Pointing this at Uncle Vernon like a sword, he said, I'm warning you, Dursley, I'm warning you, one more word, in danger of being speared on the end of an umbrella by a bearded giant. Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattened himself against the wall and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid, breathing heavily and sitting back down on the sofa, which this time sagged right back down to the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask. Hundreds of them. But what happened to the... Uh, sorry, I mean, you know who? Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished. Same night he tried to kill you. Makes you even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, see? He was getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died. Cod swallow, in my opinion. Don't know if he had enough human left in him to die. Some say he's still out there, biding his time. Like, but I don't believe it. People who was on his side came back to ours. Some of them came out of kind of trances. Don't reckon they could have done if he wasn't coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. Cause something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night that he hadn't counted on. I don't know what it was. No one does. But something about you stumped him all right. Hagrid looked at Harry with warmth and respect, blazing in his eyes. But Harry... Instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrible mistake. A wizard? Him? How could he possibly be? He'd spent his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon. If he really was really a wizard, why hadn't they been turned into warty toads every time they tried to lock him in his cupboard? If he'd once defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley had always been able to kick him around like a football? Hagrid, he said quietly, I think you must have made a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. To his surprise, Hagrid chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you were scared or angry? Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it. Every odd thing that had ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him had happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he'd somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading going to school with that ridiculous haircut, he'd managed to make it grow back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, hadn't he got his revenge without any, even realizing he was doing it? Hadn't he set a boa constrictor on him? 
He vanished the glass, remember, guys? Harry looked back at Hagrid, smiling, and saw that Hagrid was positively beaming at him. See, said Hagrid, Harry Potter, not a wizard. You wait, you'll be right famous at Hogwarts. But Uncle Vernon wasn't going to give in without a fight. Haven't I told you he's not going, he hissed. He's going to Stonewall High, and he'll be grateful for it. I've read those letters, and he needs all sorts of rubbish, spell books and wands and... If he wants to go, a great muggle like you won't stop him, growled Hagrid. Stop Lily and James Potter's son get going to Hogwarts. You're mad. His name's been down ever since he was born. He's off to the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry in the world. Seven years there and he won't know himself. He'll be with youngsters of his own sort for a change, and he'll be under the greatest headmaster Hogwarts ever had, Albus Dumbled. I am not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him magic tricks, yelled Uncle Vernon. But he had finally gone too far. Hagrid seized his umbrella and whirled it over his head. Never, he thundered. Insult! Albus Dumbledore in front of me! He brought the umbrella swishing down through the air to point at Dudley. There was a flash of violet light, a sound like a firecracker. <coughs> A sharp squeal, and the next second, Dudley was dancing on the spot with his hands clasped over his fat bottom, howling in pain. When he turned his back on them, Harry saw a curly pig's tail poking through a hole in his trousers. Trousers are just another fancy word for pants, guys. Uncle Vernon roared. Pulling Aunt Petunia and Dudley into the other room, he cast one last terrified look at Hagrid and slammed the door behind him. Hagrid looked down at his umbrella and stroked his beard. Shouldn't have lost me temper, he said ruefully, but it didn't work anyway. Meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he was so much like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. He cast a sideways look at Harry under his bushy eyebrows. Be grateful if you didn't mention that to anyone at Hogwarts, he said. I'm, er, not supposed to do magic, strictly speaking. I was allowed to do a bit to follow you and get your letters to you and stuff. One of the reasons I was so keen to take on a job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? asked Harry. Oh, well, I was at Hogwarts myself, but I, er, got expelled to tell you the truth in the third year. They snapped me wand in half and everything, but Dumbledore let me stay on as gamekeeper. Great man, Dumbledore. Why were you expelled? It's getting late and we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Hagrid loudly. Gotta get up to town. Get all your books and that. He took off his thick black coat and threw it to Harry. You can kip under that, he said. Don't mind if it wiggles a bit. I think I've got a couple of dormice in one of the pockets. <laughs> Goodness gracious. And that, on page 60, is the end of chapter 4. So... Interesting. Hagrid doesn't want to talk about why he was expelled. That can't be good. But Dumbledore let him stay on anyway. All right, guys. So we will find out next time what happens in Chapter 5, which is called Diagon Alley. And once again, we are reading the Scholastic Press edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. All right, guys. Bye for now.